Hello guys, welcome to the Seven Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for more Seven Engineering updates. Today we are going to discuss the uh, types of stresses used in Seven Engineering. Type of stresses due to the loads uh, coming in Seven Engineering structures. So first we have to discuss uh, uh, some main types, and then we were we are going to discuss the subtypes of the stresses. There are four main types of the stresses are uh, lumbar. First one is the direct stress. Are the simple stress the first type of the stress the second one is the indirect stress indirect stress and the third one is the combined stress uh, this is the combination of two stresses combined so I will explain it later combined stress and then the fourth one is the uh, thermal stresses right thermal stresses uh, I will explain the stresses one by one. The direct stresses is for the two classification subtypes. Uh, one is the shear stress, shear stress, and the other one is the uh, normal stress or axial stress. Normal or axial stress, right? Uh, and direct stresses is also for the two classification. One is the torsional stresses, torsional stresses, torsional stress. So, and the one is the bending stress. This this comes in, uh, under the category of indirect stress, bending stress. Combined stress, uh, 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 there's no such thing of stresses, but it is a combination of axial, axial plus bending. Bending stress, right? There's the axial stress and there's the bending stress. So the combination of these two comes under the category of Combined stress, right? And thermal stress is no further subtypes. It is the main type, and there is no subcategory of thermal stress. So, the uh, for the classification of these stress is the normal axial is two types only, while there is no other classification of these stresses. The normal stress is the tensile stresses, and the tensile and the compression stresses. Our compressive stresses, tensile and compressive stresses, right? Uh, these are the types of the uh, stresses. Now I will explain these types one by one. So first coming uh, from here, direct stress. So direct or simple stress is two types. One is the shear stress and one is the normal axial stress. The uh, shear stress is used uh, as mainly occurring the beams or uh, uh, like any, any structure, any member which, uh, which comes uh, under the sliding force. For example, I'm uh, uh, taking, I will explain it here one by one, right? So the funny first one is the shear stress, right? So take an example. This is the, for example, this is any member. Uh, we say that the one is a member, and there is another member, and uh, and there's some joints uh, created. These are some these are joined by some uh, by something. So and we are applying some tensile forces here P, and tensile forces here P. So uh, if, when we when we try to when we try to uh, insile these two members on one another on one another from one another, uh, some forces some stresses will create uh, along this boundary of the two objects. We call this the shear stresses, and we represent these uh, shear stresses by uh, shear stresses by a formula of uh, P under the area of A. Uh, this in case this is a single shear now because only one. Uh, a, a boundary is being sheared uh, due to the force, so we call shear uh, shear stresses creates, right? Dividing the force, uh, how much force is applied and how much load is being uh, acted on this body, two bodies, and dividing by the area, how much area is being involved at the two two joints, uh, this area, so we create we find the shear stresses, right? So this is also very important and special in, in beam and considering the simple supported beam. So when the uh, when the load acting on the beam, uh, shear stresses here creates uh, in the, at the joints, it supports very really large where there is zero stresses, shear stresses at the midpoint. And uh, due to the shear stresses, uh, we, we place the stirrups to resist the shear stresses demand. Right? And this was the little introduction to the shear stresses. Now coming to the normal axial stresses, this is mainly occurring in the columns. Uh, this type of st two stresses I will explain, axial stresses. Axial stresses. 
For example, taking this uh, any member and we uh, any column, for example, and the load is applied in this column in this direction. So, uh, so this would be the reaction to this column. So, and when the load is on this column, for example, this we take an example of column. So, due to this load, when F is acting on this, and for taking this uh, column area, uh, so, uh, a rectangular column, so we uh, area B into D, the width and the the depth of the column, the width and the uh, one two dimension of the column, for example, I will take the cross section. This is the width and this is the depth. We can see the other uh, cross section. So we uh, call this the uh, cross section of the column, and uh, we can find the area by multiplying these two dimensions of the column. So so we can find the compression tensile the stresses. This is a column, so we find the compression stresses, right? By the formula, by dividing the force per unit area. How much force is applied, and what's the area of this object? So by dividing these two, we can find the compression stresses. Simply, uh, we can find the uh, tensile stresses by uh, by by a formula. By what formula? Tensile stresses can be found similarly by this formula. But it's in silo. For example, this is in rubber, and we stretch in this the outward direction. So this is a P, and this is the object area A. So dividing this P is a P, and dividing this by the area of the object, we call the tensile stresses created in this object. So this was all about the normal or the axial stresses. This is mostly common in the uh, compression member or maybe in the tensile member and the uh, say, well, and the uh, uh, cable stress uh, bridges or the truss bridges we take mainly into consideration of axial stress or normal stresses. The other one is the indirect stress. Indirect stress is also the two types. One is the torsion stress and one is the bending stress. The torsion stress is, uh, is created, for example, taking this into beam, uh, this any beam, and uh, when the object is twisted around its own axis, right? When this object is twisted, for example, uh, taking this uh, marker is in a beam, when this object is twisted uh, about its neutral axis, is the load, uh, the, this is the load applied and this is two axis are uh, about its neutral axis. So torsion, it will torch, it will uh, rotate like, it will twist like. So the torsion stresses is created in this object. So we call it the torsion stresses. Coming to the now, the bending stresses. Bending stresses is mostly uh, common in the uh, slaves or the beams. And, and we have to find the bending di moment diagram. And it's very important to go to know about the bending stresses, and we can find the bending stresses by this formula, M C I divided by I, where the moment M is the moment calculated moment. Calculated moment. If you calculate, calculated moment. I is the moment of inertia uh, about the neutral axis, and C is the, uh, the for example, this is the cross section of the curve beam, so it's the neutral axis. And C is the distance from the neutral axis to the extreme fiber. We call it C. That is the C. Uh, we will determine the moment from the diagram. We determine the uh, C, the depth of the column, the mid depth of the column, and the I, the moment of inertia of this column about the neutral axis. So by finding all this and putting in this equation, we find the stresses at any point in the beam. Right? We can find the bending stresses at any point in the beam by knowing these three quantities, M, C, and I. So coming to the combined stresses, it is simply is the combination of the axial and the bending stresses. For example, if this is a considering this is a beam and this is being uh, uh, applied to the axial stresses as well as the, to the bending stresses, it will bend like that and it will stretch like that. So two type of stresses created now. One is the axial P P. So we can find the combined stresses. You can find it by uh, P over A. There's the axial stress and the bending stress. We can find the MC over I. How much bending uh, is being uh, created in this and how much bending stress is being produced due to the, uh, the loading. So we categorize as the combined stresses. It takes into the combination of the axial load, how much axial stress are created, as well as the, com as well as the com uh, bending stresses. So this is the combined stress mostly used in the uh, members where uh, where the members subject to the two type of stresses at, at, at one time. So the last one is the thermal stresses, right? It's also very important to consider an every type of structure. Uh, for example, I'm considering here the uh, uh, any beam, any beam. So due to the loads, uh, due to the thermal loads, maybe due to the temperature change or the beam dimension, it contracts and expands 
uh, so to so to resist this com um, uh, compressive or tensile stresses created due to the temperature change, we provide some uh, a minimum reinforcement to resist this uh, shrinkage. Uh, a shrinkage occurs due to the thermal stresses. So we place some reinforcement and a thermal stresses are the stresses which create due to the temperature change. Mainly due to the temperature change. And we must determine the temperature change stresses and then we have to find the uh, minimum requirement area so we, that we provide to resist these thermal stresses. And it must occur when due to the temperature change, when the temperature is very high, so it will expand like that. It will expand like that. So uh, some stresses will create uh, these two portion, and to the cool uh, when the uh, high when temperature is very really low, so it will shrink. So the beam will like shrink like this. So what we do, we provide also some reinforcement to resist the shrinkage and this expansion of the beam, or any maybe the road if you make the concrete road. So this is just to uh, know how much changes uh, and the. Uh, member occurs in according to that we provide the reinforcement to resist the stresses. So uh, this is all about the type of stresses used in civil engineering structures and please don't forget to subscribe our channel and please uh, share our video with your friends, colleagues and thank you for watching our video.